Hi there, and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of my latest project, which is called Alia City One. So let's just play it a little bit, and we can see what it's about. This is a funny thing that happened. The cursor got like totally messed up. It's messed up in the build too. It looks kind of cool, weird, like Michael Bro glitch art cursor. But yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. There's a menu. The menu is actually created using the Game Jam menu template, which is something that I made for Unity, which is available for free on the Asset Store. Um, and so what we have, it's just kind of a walking simulator, first-person game. There's this thing where you can shoot these lights, which I thought was very pretty. Uh, and then I made a little hit sparkle effect, uh, which uses the new uh, visual effects graph. Um, and so as you approach, like so here, right, we're approaching one of these kind of light panel installations and we can hear that there's these kind of weird chimey music, but we can't see it until, here we go, we get around the right side of it because these are actually uh, rectangle lights uh, in Unity and uh, you can only, they're one-sided. You can only see one side of them. And I actually thought that was kind of cool. Like, I like the way they disappear as you, uh, and you can only kind of see the light that they're casting, but not the, the they have colliders. So the thing will collide with them. Uh, and then they kind of come into view as you come to the other side. And I thought that was kind of pretty. Um, I actually wanted to add like a photo taking mode to this. I ended up taking a lot of screenshots of it that I thought were nice, like that's kind of a nice image. Um, but I didn't have time during the jam. Um, and so this is all procedurally generated with Strata. Uh, this is based off the cube world uh, example. It's actually like the mini rogue dungeon rendered in 3D. Uh, and uh, what I've done is added, you can see this kind of irregularity uh, in the cubes that the level is built out of. Uh, it is, I added a little bit of random kind of basically noise to the, uh, to the position. So there's this, which is really just kind of to create these nice irregular surfaces for the, uh, for the light to play off of, uh, which I thought was pretty. Uh, let's see where else we're going. Okay, let's go over here. Oh, yes. And then the other thing is that this is done with, let me see what my time is doing. Three minutes, okay. Um, that's also kind of pretty. So there's also, there are these prefabs that spawn these grids of lights. And there's like maybe eight different um, variations. This one spawns with the rotation facing in one direction. And then there's also a little bit of positional noise which I really love. I feel like it's almost like letter. It's almost like looks like text in a weird way or like um, like kind of blocky Japanese kanji or something. I really like the kind of slightly irregular geometric forms that it generates. Um, this is also a little bit inspired by um, the work, uh, clearly inspired by um, Naissance E. Uh, or uh, Naissance, I don't know how you pronounce that, which is actually free on Steam nowadays, uh, which is a kind of a masterpiece of brutalist video game architecture that's actually gone on and inspired a whole lot of other stuff, um, like the work of Moshi Linke and, uh, or Linka and uh, William Cheer with uh, Manifold Garden, and just all the people that are interested in kind of monumental brutalist architecture. Um, which I'm also a fan of, and this is kind of an expression of. Um, and then another kind of thread that I'm exploring here is I've been studying a lot lately the work of Brian Eno, which I have sort of, I feel not uncritical of. There's things about his work that I find a little bit annoying, but, but he's very brilliant. And uh, one of the things that he's been doing in his own art practice is these kind of what he calls light paintings, uh, which I, no disrespect to him, but I don't really like what he does with visually, but I, I really like the concept. 
so this was a kind of a idea of like exploring this kind of concept of sort of light paintings or light sculptures, obviously in 3D space, and then with this procedural component. Um, there's volumetric lighting, courtesy of HDRP. I'm just checking my time, five minutes. Okay, we're doing good. Um, there's volumetric lighting by HDRP. You can see the, uh, the light shafts here. I tried to not go too OD with the God rays um, and make it a little bit subtle. I did actually experiment with having the panels gener generate volumetric shafts as well, which is possible, but turns out to be, because I'm spawning maybe 60, 80 lights in the scene, turns out to be really, really costly performance-wise, so I ended up just going with the main directional light as volumetric, and then the, uh, the panels are not, and they just get this kind of aura with glow. You can see here there's some weird rendering artifacts. See that flickering pixelation? Uh, I believe that's in something with HDRP, which is still in beta. I'm not sure. I just shipped with it because YOLO. Um, the other thing that I think is kind of interesting here is, I don't know if you would call this chiaroscuro, but this kind of hard black and white lighting reminds me a little bit of like Frank Miller and Sin City and that kind of stuff. Although obviously there's also these like gradient spaces as well, but the directional light gives these kind of hard black and white images. Uh, and that's just basically by turning all of the indirect lighting off and setting it all to black uh, so that the uh, we get these like hard black shadows and then this, this kind of like slightly harsh white light, uh, which I thought was was cool and is a nice contrast to these kind of gradated uh, light patterns that we get from the, the light panels. Um, yeah, stuff like this I really like, just with the lights kind of like coming into view and these kind of different color fields. I thought about doing more colors or doing, this is nice too, um, or doing procedural color schemes, which I might experiment with in a future iteration. I kind of want to do maybe some more versions of this, which is why I called it Alias City 1. Um, I might do an Alias City 2. Um, that's pretty. Um, but I just ended up going with these four colors, blue, orange, kind of pale red, and white, um, because I like the way they interact, and there's something nice about the kind of primary, primary color aspect of things. Although, obviously, orange is not a primary color, but almost primary colors. Um, so, yeah, that's the project. So, something I mentioned in my channel update is I'm thinking about making the source available for this uh, for sale on itch um, as a kind of an example of a project that has like a menu and a character controller and audio and post-processing and HD lighting and all this stuff. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. Uh, I think I'm just going to put it up just kind of as a thing, just to like see maybe somebody wants to buy it. If not, obviously no hard feelings. Um, and I'm kind of experimenting with, I mentioned this in my channel update video. I kind of, I'm just trying to figure out what are the, what are the ways that it makes sense to monetize this kind of work, right? Um, I would like to spend more time on it. And for that, being that I'm a middle-aged man with a family, I can't really do a lot of stuff that doesn't make money. So figure out some way to, uh, or I can't, more accurately, can't spend a lot of time on things that don't make money. So figure out a way to, uh, you know, have this generate some income. I'm kind of interested to see. Uh, and to see if that's valuable for people. Um, so, yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'm going to do further videos on the channel, breaking down individual parts of this, the audio, lighting, etc., in more detail. So watch out for those, and you can grab the, uh, the game from the itch.io page, which I'll link in the description. Thanks so much for watching.